Praise the Lord. So glad to have you back with us here at God's Got a Plan. I believe we have a very, very special word for you today. And we know that so many out here are dealing with sicknesses and illnesses of all kinds. And the word of God says that by his stripes we are healed. And I believe today somebody's going to be healed. I believe someone's going to be delivered. Somebody's going to be set free from an inf infirmity or an affliction, whatever that test is you find yourself in when it comes to dealing with, let's just say, some pain in your body, uh, whatever that need is that's in your life today, I believe that God's going to give you a timely word today that's going to help you move through that problem, okay? So just follow along with me. Matter of fact, I would advise you to get yourself a pad, a notebook, or get yourself a pen, pencil, and get your Bible out, of course, because I believe that the notes and the scriptures that I'm going to share with you today is going to be able to help you during your time of devotion and that quiet time. You can look over these scriptures, and I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. So come on and follow along with me, okay? Uh, let me just open up in a word of prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for the leading of your spirit. We're thanking you for the blessing, Lord God, that is found in your word. We're thanking you because we do know that Jesus is the light of the world. And Father God, we pray that your wisdom would be given over this air, over our television network today. And that you will use my lips, Father God, to impart words of life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So God bless you now. Let's get into the word and see what God has to say. My theme for today's show is this. Believe God for your healing. Believe God for your healing. And many of us don't realize that our faith is on trial every day. And irregardless of what you're dealing with in life, you have to deal, you have to bring faith to the table. I'm going to say it again. You have to bring faith to the table. So let's open up in, in, in that opening verse of scripture. My theme verse is coming out of the book of James, chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, okay? Here's where we go. Here we go. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. You know, that's a powerful verse right there. Because not only is it talking about your healing, but we're also talking about being saved. You see, you know, God wouldn't save you and not heal you. Are you hearing me today? I want you to know and understand that if God saved you, he brought you into that place or into that relationship where you can now be healed also. That's what's so beautiful about this particular verse here, because the prayer of faith. That's what I'm talking about, your faith being on trial. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, shall save the sick. See, God is more concerned about your salvation because once you get saved, then you can be healed. Are you hearing me? And, then, and look at that, that, that 16th verse says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another for another that you may be healed and this is the point this is where I want you to look at this is what I want you to look at the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much so in other words you know those of us who are really praying seriously see God didn't bring us into a relationship where we would have a let's just say be religious he does not want you to be religious. He brought, he's opened the door to salvation for you to have a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Why? Because that relationship is going to, let's just say, prove really what's in your heart. And faith, my God, faith is the key that's going to unlock the door so you can step into that place where you can begin to see the healing, the manifestation of God's will for your life. It's God's will that you be healed. It's God's will that you be blessed. It's God's will that you come out of whatever it is you might find yourself in today that is trying you, 
that is designed to break you down, to make you think that, Lord, 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 I just don't know when you're going to heal me. First of all, we have to stop talking like that. We have to stop doubting God. The Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. You have to know that this word is life. God's word is able to give you life. God's word is able to pick you up, turn you around. God's word is able to resurrect. Lord God, I'm here to tell you, he's able to breathe on you today if you can just initiate some God kind of faith and believe God, take him at his word. Now, let me give you another scripture here in Isaiah 53. And that's a very familiar verse of scripture for those of us who are in the word. Isaiah 53 and 4 says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He has borne your grief and carried your sorrows. Are you listening to me today? OK. And then he says, yet he was he esteemed himself stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, wounded for your transgression, for your sin. He was wounded for every one of us. He went through, he was afflicted, he, he, he went through the, the, the pain and suffering of that cross so that we can be healed. Oh my God, my God, are you hearing me today? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, of your peace, was upon him. And by his stripes, and with his stripes, you are healed. Note, it didn't say you're being healed. It didn't say you're going to be healed tomorrow. You're going to be healed later. No, what was done was done for the right now. I want you to understand all you have is what you have right now. And I know many of you are sitting out there. You're in the hospital. You're sick. You're on medication. The medication don't see, doesn't seem to be doing what it's prescribed to do. Whatever the case may be, the doctor may have given you a negative report. But I'm here to tell you that God has the final say. And by his stripes, you are healed. So I want you to understand we have to be able to take God at his word. You have to remove all doubt. You have to remove all worry. You have to remove all fear. You cannot be double minded. You have to believe you can't. Let's just say be moved by your emotions, your feelings. I don't feel like I'm healed. Well, the devil will play with your emotions. He will play with your feelings. You have to take God at his word. You have to trust God with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Are you hearing me today? See, in all of your ways, acknowledge God, acknowledge his word, trust his word, stand on his word. And I'm here to tell you, when you begin to, to allow God's word to my God to manifest and begin to do what it does best, that word of God will fix a brother. It will fix a sister. It will bring you to a place where you can look back over your life and you can say, my God, it was nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That precious blood of Jesus, my God, don't let Christ go to the cross for nothing. I mean, this is the whole reason why God sent his son Jesus to the cross so he can die for you, so he can die for me. So that we can be healed, so we can stand in the manifestation of the healing and know that we're able to be blessed. And look at what he says. Look, look at this in Matthews 8 and 16, uh, 8 and 16. Now, here's what he says. When the evening had come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word. Jesus cast out those demons and those spirits with the word of God. Are you hearing me? You can bind up them devils and demons that's coming up against you, coming up against your finances, coming up against your household, coming up against your children. You have to be able to use the word. We have not because we ask not. Well, if you've asked God for anything, ask him for wisdom to know how to fight a good fight of faith. Look what he says here. He says here and heal all that were sick. Now, listen to what he says now. That 16th verse says he healed all that was sick. Now, understand this. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And if he healed yesterday, he's healing right now. You can be healed right now once you allow your faith to come up to that level. 
My God, I'm not just talking about a, a physical manifestation. So we have to realize now we are spiritual beings housed in the earth suit. And, 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 and God is concerned about your soul. What do a prophet a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's what God wants back. He wants your soul to be right. Your soul, you know, he don't want a sin sick soul. You do not want a sin sick soul. God doesn't want a sin sick soul. This is why we have to repent. This is why we have to come before him. This is why you have to trust him for his word, for that healing in your body. My God. Look at that 17th verse. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Now, I just got through reading Isaiah, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. And that's what this particular verse is, is, is alluding to. The prophet Isaiah saying he took our infirmities and bore our sickness. He took your infirmities and he bore that sickness. Whatever that sickness is that you're dealing with today, I want you to know he carried it to the cross. He carried it to the cross. My brother, my sister, I want you to understand whether you're looking at this at home, whether you're in the hospital, whether you're in an institution, a facility, whatever, you might be in the comfort of your own home. I want you to know he carried all your sickness, all your infirmities, everything that would come up against your body to try to stop you, break you down. He nailed it to the cross. My God, my God. And I know the Bible says we learn to walk by faith and not by sight because I don't feel like it. It's not about your feelings. You have to trust God and take him at his word. Trust God and take him at his word. Look at what 1 John, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Look what it says. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And it says this. This is the confidence that you have in him that you have in him, that if you ask anything according to his will, see, it is his will that you be not just saved, but that you be healed. Why bring, why bring you into salvation and not want to heal you? Why wouldn't he want to heal you? Why wouldn't the Savior, why wouldn't God want you to be healed? So don't say, you know, and many of us in the church are saying, well, if it's God's will, you know, I'll be healed. No, no, no. It is his will that you be healed. See, you can't leave room for doubt. We have to stop making room for doubt. You, you, you have to release yourself from these, uh, let's just say these little slogans, these little things that we would say that would make it sound good, that would justify why, we're, why God is allowed. No, by faith. I'm standing on what God has said in his word. It is his will that I am to be healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet and all parts in between. Why? Because Christ went to the cross. I'm covered under the blood. You're covered under the blood, my brother. You're covered under the blood, my sister. Stand on the word and not doubt God. Believe God. And look at what he says. He says in the 15th verse, according to his will, and if we know that he hears us. See, you got to know that you know that you know that your God hears you. I'm speaking to you today. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you have been doubting. You trying to figure out, well, God, have you heard what I prayed? I've been praying for a long time and I'm not seeing a change. Well, I want you to know the prayers of the righteous avail of much. God Here's your prayers and your prayers. Matter of fact, you know something what I found out even after you pass on and go on from this life into the next. I want you to understand that your prayers are still being answered. Your prayers are still up before God. He's still answering those prayers. That's how precious, how valuable and important your prayers are to God. Are you hearing me? And we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Are you hearing me? See, so whatever it is I'm asking God for now, I want you to understand God is not a man that he would lie. And it's his will. So we have to stir up some faith. We have to allow ourselves to, let's just say, operate in that trust, that faith, that belief. In other words, I have enough confidence in God to know that God can do what he says he can do. According to scripture, God can do what he says he can do. We got to stop doubting God now. 
And I know, I know it hurts. I know, I know some of you watching this program tonight, today, whatever hour you're watching this program, you're going through right now. And you can't figure out how you're going to come out of this. And you don't know what the doctor going to say the next time you go in to see him. Well, I'm here to tell you, every sickness, every disease, I don't care what it is you've dealt with going through. According to scripture, it is God's will that you be healed. Are you hearing me? According to scripture, it is God's will that you be healed. John 14 and 13 says this, and whatsoever you shall ask in Jesus name, that will he do, that the father may be glorified in the son. Are you hearing me? Whatever you ask Jesus in his name. See, you got to ask him in his name. You got to ask God in Jesus name. See, you have to, and whatever you ask, and look what he says in the 14th verse, if you ask anything in my name, I mean, that's, that's, that's a promise right there. That's a promise. I, I, look here. When somebody make a promise like that, I mean, you have nothing else to do but to stand on that promise and know that if God, my God, I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm talking about the one that loved you even when you was in your mess. He didn't like what you was doing, but he loved you. Many of us are dealing with these sicknesses and illnesses based upon some things that we, let's just say that lifestyle we may have had before we came to Christ. But now that I've come to him, you know, I, I, Lord, I want you to fix me. I want you to heal me. I want you to deliver me. But we don't realize, according to scripture, as a man sow, so shall you reap. So even though you're forgiven of your sin, even though you find yourself now at a place where, where you realize that, that God is working on your life, God is working in your life and he's trying to do a new thing in you. I want you to understand now you have to come to that place in your life where you're allowing God, my God, to have preeminence over the negative stinking thinking. We can't allow ourselves to, to operate in that area of stinking thinking. God don't love me. God don't care about me. God don't know what I'm going through. God knows everything about you. If he's concerned about the sparrow that would fall out of the tree and die and fall into the ground, guess what? He's concerned about you. Oh, yes, everything. He wants, he wants you to know that he's holding you tonight. He's holding you today in the hollow of his hand. He loves you that much. Look at John 14 and 13. John 14 and 13. And whatsoever, whatsoever you shall ask in my name. I want you to hear that again. I want you to hear that again. Whatsoever mean whatever you ask him. He's willing to do whatsoever you ask him, but it has to be according to his will. You know, the Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but it's only by his spirit. Are you hearing me? Only by his spirit. We have to come in spirit and we have to come in truth. We have to come in spirit and we have to come in truth. Look at Mark 11 and 24. I'm not through with you yet. Like I said, I have some scriptures for you. And I want us to be able to, let's just say, glean from this program today. I believe that when, by the time this program go off, you're going to be armed and dangerous. Uh, did you hear what I said? You're going to be armed and dangerous. We're going to lock and load. Right now, we're locking and loading. We putting some ammunition in our gun because we're going to knock that. We're going to shoot. We're going to blow that devil up. Whatever it is you need, God got it in his word. Are you hearing me? Mark 11 and 24 says, whatever you desire when you pray. Whatever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive it. And you shall have it. Whatever you desire. Are you hearing me? If you're desiring a healing, all you got to do, pray, pray for it. Get it sometime, get like that woman, that woman with the imp, that woman that kept coming back to the judge. I'm not going to stop coming until you do something for me. Sometimes, you know, some will say, well, just tell them once. Whatever the need is that's in your life, hey, I'm here to tell you now, you know, we keep, I keep coming to God. I'm going to keep bringing my situation to God until I see a change. I'm not going to doubt him. I'm going to stand on the word. 
I'm going to trust him. I'm going to believe. And I realize it's my faith that's going to bring me through. It's your faith that's going to bring you through. You have to stand on that word of God, trusting God and knowing that all things are working together for the good. He's setting somebody up for a testimony. My God, you're about to go into your church and give God praise. You're about to go into your church and bring up a new testimony today. So I'm here to tell you, your church need to hear something new. Well, guess what? God is putting you in a position to bring a new testimony that's going to glorify the son that's going to glorify God, that's going to glorify my God. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, if it had not been for the Lord who not just saved you, but want to heal you, want to deliver you from the bonds of sin, from the chains of the devil, from the enemy completely. When you were saved, you were saved to the utmost. In other words, nothing was left out. In other words, everything that you would need, God had supplied everything you would need. Why? Because he wants you to be able to serve him to your best, to your fullest. Uh, God don't want you to come a half-baked Christian. He wants you to come fully cooked, fully prepared. The Bible says either come hot or cold. Don't come lukewarm because if you come lukewarm, he's going to sprue you out of his mouth. If you come hot, he know you straight. He know you're ready. I'm here to ask you today, are you ready to take care of business? Are you ready to believe God today for your healing? My brothers and sisters, you're going to have to stir up that God kind of faith, and you have to believe God today for your healing. Remove all doubt. And when you remove all doubt, come in the name of Jesus. No other name on the earth and in heaven. My God, in the name of Jesus is power. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? There's power in the name of Jesus. If you can believe, if you can believe, if you can only believe, all things are possible for you. If you can only believe. I believe that's in Mark 9, 23. If you can only believe, all things are possible unto you. My God. There was a young man that came he came to Jesus, had a son that was demon possessed. And he said, Lord, can, if it's your will, can you heal my son? And he says, if you can only believe. Jesus told him, if you can only believe, it will, you, you will receive what you're asking me for. And that's what God wants to do in your life today. If you would only believe, my brother. If you would only believe, my sister. Now look at Hebrews 4 and 2. Now, I, want you, I think this is very important because this is why many of us are missing it. Here's what he says in Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard the word. Are you hearing me? You have to believe this word of God. You got to mix this, your faith with the word of God in order for it to have any effect. I'm talking about positive effect in reference to allowing you to come to that place where you can live this life that God has given you. You want to live your best life now. Look at this now. You only get one life now. Uh, he might not call you back like he called Lazarus out of, the, out of the grave. I'm here to tell you now, out of the tomb, you have to live your best life now, and your life matters. And in order for your life to matter, you have to take advantage of every available tool, weapon, instrument that God has made available to you. He's given you his word. He's given you his promise. Luke 10, 19 says, I give you power to thread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means break that word nothing up. No thing shall by any means harm you, hurt you. Why? Because God's desire, his will is for you to be healed. You're going to be healed today. We're going to pray in a minute. We're going to pray in a minute. I want to give you this last scripture in 3 John 2. 3 John 2 says this, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Are you hearing me? Even as your soul prospers. But he, it's God's desire that you be in good health. Good health. 
so you can be effective, so you can go out there and do what you have to do. Why? Because God wants you to be blessed. So let's, let's, let's do this right now. Let's declare war on every form of sickness and disease by taking authority over those devils and demons, that power that is trying to possess and that's influencing us in a negative way. And if you're sick today, I'm going to pray a prayer of faith today. Uh, matter of fact, if you can just reach your hands, point your hand towards my hand today. Matter of fact, point your hand towards my hand right now, right now. Put your hands towards my hands today. And we're going to pray the prayer of faith. And we're going to believe God for your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you know. You know what my brother, what my sister is going through right now. And Lord God, we're praying, Father God, we're believing you and taking you at your word. I'm asking you, Lord God, to lift that infirmity. I'm asking you, Father God, to go into that hospital, go into that nursing home, go into that facility. I'm asking you, Father God, whatever the need is, Lord God, that's in my brother, in my sister right now. Oh, God, diabetes got to take flight right now. Oh, God, MS, Lord God. Uh, oh, God, I'm praying right now for cancer. Oh, God, cancel out cancer right now in the name of Jesus. If there's any drug addictions, Lord God, oh, God, I believe you right now, Father God, that you're able to deliver, you're able to... Free up, Lord God, that brother, that sister. If there's someone sitting out there that don't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that you heal. I pray that you bring them into a place, Father God, where they will accept you as their Lord and as their Savior. And Father God, give us all a fresh start in a new beginning. Help us now to walk by faith and not by sight. I ask this in Jesus' name. Please, Lord, in Jesus' name, bless my brother, bless my sister. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Are you hearing me today? See, I want you to know you are more than blessed. You are blessed. Why? Because God so loved you that he sent his son that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You can't have the abundant life if you're not, if you're not healed in your body. Well, I want you to know God wants you to be healed, blessed, and delivered. If you're watching this program and you desire a daily bread, we have new daily breads coming out for the month of March. And if you desire this daily bread, just give me a call. Uh, let me get your mailing address, your information, and I'll be sure to forward this daily bread to you at no cost to you, the viewer. I want you to know that we here at God's Got a Plan, we want you to be blessed. We want you to know the fullness and the joy of the Lord. We want you to know what it is to, to walk by faith and not by sight. If this program has been a blessing to you, why don't you write, drop us a line, let us know how this program is, let's just say, impacting your life, hopefully in a positive way. If you've missed any shows you would like to see, well, you can look us up on YouTube and you can follow us on YouTube. Matter of fact, on the, at the credits at the end of the program, you can just follow us, okay? We love you now. God bless you. Have yourself a good day. And keep walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Don't